Hello, this grammar video is about Ladino, a Judeo-Spanish. Before I get into the grammar section, I'm going to talk about some differences in phonology between Spanish and Ladino, or Judeo-Spanish, Judesimo. One thing to keep in mind is that there are many varieties of Ladino, so pronunciation differs based on region, especially between Haketia from North Africa and Eastern from the Balkan regions, Turkey. Ladino is not a dialect of modern Spanish like Canarian, Cuban, Mexican, Argentinian, Equato, Guinean, etc. Modern Ladino is a result of several Romance Iberian languages coexisting that amalgamated and later mixed with other non Iberian languages. The mix is due to different expulsed communities coming together and a homogeneous language forming. As you can see here, Ladino didn't come from modern Spanish. The language is divided after medieval Spanish during the Middle Spanish period. Ladino did continue to evolve just like modern Spanish did. Pronunciation Before Ladino was written in the Hebrew alphabet, today it's written also in the Latin alphabet. The name of the alphabet used is Solitreo. It's not exactly what's pictured above because it's a different type of script. In Ladino, the written H is always pronounced, so it's like H, huh, like the H in English. In Spanish, the H isn't pronounced, so you would pronounce it Hazino, sick, Spanish, and Fermo. Many words that would have a silent H in Spanish would just not write anything in Ladino. So for example, Ladino would be Azer, in Spanish would be Acer or Acer. Ladino would be Hermano, and in Spanish it would be Hermano. There's no Ceteo in Ladino. Ceteo is when the Z and the C before I or E is pronounced like a TH in English. Ceteo. Ladino pronounces the Z as a Z. For example, Azer instead of Acer or hacer, vosotros instead of vosotros. Ladino pronounces the V like the English V. In some modern dialects of Spanish, they also pronounce this V similarly. So in Ladino, you would say vivir in modern Spanish, vivir. Ladino, saber in modern Spanish, saber. And laborar, which means trabajar or to work in Spanish. There's no J, the H sound, in Ladino. So whenever you have a J, it's pronounced like the S in Asia or pleasure or measure. For example, hijo instead of hijo, ojo instead of ojo. Even though this is the sound for J in Spanish, the sound exists in some dialects. In Ladino, the DJ sound is pronounced like the J in judge. For example, Julio instead of Julio, Gente instead of Gente, Jugar instead of Jugar, which means July, people, and to play. It's not pronounced like the J, but it's very common to find this pronunciation in the beginning of words where the modern Spanish equivalent would have a J. It's common for some dialects in modern Spanish to pronounce the Y and the double L like J as well. The SH in Ladino is like the SH in English. For example, dicho or debajo for dijo and debajo. This sound is also very common in the middle of a word. Even though sh doesn't exist in Spanish, except in borrowings, the sound does exist in some dialects. This isn't a coincidence. These sounds once existed in some form in Old Spanish, but later evolved to one sound, ch. Letters and combinations you won't find. In Ladino, there's no ñ, the n with a little mini n on top of it like in modern Spanish. For this sound in Ladino, Ladino, you would write N-Y. For example, Señor instead of Señor, Señora instead of Señora, Año instead of Año. They all mean the same thing. The C-O, the C-A, and the C-U in modern Spanish is usually written with K-O, K-A, and K-U. For example, Con instead of Con, Gaji instead of Casi, Cuisina instead of Cocina, or cocina. The C-I and the C-E in modern Spanish is usually S-I, S-E, or Z-I, or Z-E in Ladino. For example, decir instead of decir, or decir. Conocer instead of conocer, or conocer. Especial instead of especial, or especial. The double L doesn't exist in Ladino as it does in modern Spanish. For this sound in Ladino, they would write a Y. For example, llamarse, ella, allá. This sound is very common in modern Spanish as well. So some people say llamarse, ella, and allá. For the modern Spanish Q-U in Ladino, they would just write K. For example, chiquitico instead of chiquitico. Que instead of 
ke, ken instead of kien. Ladino is much more phonetic. So even though it looks very different written in Ladino, it's pronounced very similar. For example, explicar, explicar. Both Ladino and modern Spanish would pronounce it the same way. Aceptas, aceptais. Cinco, cinco. Pronouns. For Ladino, I'm always going to use the standard Ladino accent since this video is for Ladino. My modern Spanish pronunciation is more from Argentina, so you'll see that it's a bit different, but I think it's good to know how much the Spanish language has evolved from its once shared time with Ladino. First, I'm going to read the Ladino. Yo for I, tu for you, ella for she, el for he, mozotros, mozotras for we, Vosotros, vosotras, for you, plural, ellas, for they, the plural of she, ellos, for they, the plural of he. As for modern Spanish, you would say, yo, tú, vos, ella, él, nosotros, nosotras, vosotros, vosotras, ellas, ellos. Ladino separated before the existence of the usted and ustedes from modern Spanish. So for formal you, you use vos, which is the second person plural. So for both the formal you and plural you, you use vos. For the informal plural you, you can use vos or vosotras and vosotros, like in modern Spanish. Modern Spanish also has vos, but the differences are in Ladino, the vos is the formal singular, the formal plural, and the informal plural. In modern Spanish, the vos is the informal singular. It's the opposite of usted. In modern Spanish, whenever you have with me, with you, with himself, with herself, you connect the word in this special construction. So, for example, with me, you would say conmigo. In Ladino, this doesn't exist. So, instead of conmigo, you would say con me. Instead of contigo or con vos, you would say con ti. Instead of consigo, you would say con si. The rest are the same as in modern Spanish. Con vosotros, con vosotros, con ellas, con ellos. Now let's look at the verbs to be, ser, and to have, tener. In Ladino, you would say for I am, yo so, you are, tu sos, she is, ella es, he is, el es. Tu and vos coexisted in Spain, and here you could see how in Ladino they kept one of the constructions of vos, which is the you are construction. You don't say tu eres in Ladino. We are in Ladino would be mosotras somos. For the masculine, it would be mosotros somos. For you, plural are, it would be vosotros sos. For the masculine, vosotras sos. For the feminine, they are. In the feminine would be ellas son. In the masculine, ellos son. For the vos, you use everything that is vosotros. You just change the pronoun. So instead of saying vosotros, vosotras, you would say vos. So this would be vos sos. In Spanish, you use the third person singular. Usted es. In Ladino, I have. Yo tengo. You have. Tú tienes. She has. Ella tiene. He has. Él tiene. In modern Spanish, yo tengo, tú tienes, vos tenés, ella tiene, él tiene. If you want to find out more about vos, you could check my channel for a video about it. We have, vosotras tenemos, you plural have, vosotros tenés, they have, the feminine, ellas tienen, ellos tienen, in the masculine. And the formal, vos tenés. In this section, I'm going to go over modal verbs, days of the week, months, indirect object pronouns. To say something is necessary, or that you must do something, you use cale and ser menester. For example, Ladino, cale hacer esto agora. In modern Spanish, hay que hacer esto ahora. We have to do this now. In Ladino, cale ir ya. In modern Spanish, hay que ir ya. We have to go now. In Ladino, cale meldar esto. In modern Spanish, hace falta leer esto. We must, you must read this now. Cale en dos. Hace falta dos. Two are needed. Es menester acordarse. Es necesario acordarse. It's necessary to remember. Necesitar. Tener que. To need. To have to do something. Here are the days of the week, starting with Monday in Ladino and ending in Sunday. Necesito ir el lunes, martes, miércoles, jueves, viernes, Shabbat, al -had. I need to go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. 
The ones that change the most are Saturday, which in modern Spanish is Sabado and not Shabbat, and Domingo, which is Sunday and not Alhad. These are the months of the year, starting with January and ending in December. Tienen que mercar los billetes para enero, febrero, marzo, abril, mayo, junio, julio, agosto, septiembre, octubre, noviembre, diciembre. She or he needs to buy the tickets for January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. In Spanish, you would say, Tiene que comprar los billetes para enero, febrero, marzo, abril, mayo, junio, julio, agosto, septiembre, octubre, noviembre, diciembre. To like and indirect objects. Placerle a. The indirect objects in Ladino are me, te, le, mos, vos, les. For example, me place viajar. I like to travel. Te place viajar. You like to travel. Le place viajar. He or she likes to travel. Mos place viajar. We like to travel. Vos place viajar. You plural like to travel. Les place viajar. They like to travel. In modern Spanish, it would be Me gusta viajar. Te gusta viajar. Le gusta viajar. Nos gusta viajar. Os gusta viajar. Les gusta viajar. The ones that stick up the most are the mos, which in Spanish is nos, and the vos, which in Spanish is os. Direct object pronouns. These are very similar to modern Spanish. For example, me, te, lo, la, mos, Vos, los, las. In modern Spanish, me, te, lo, la, nos, os, los, las. Poder, to be able to. Ladino, esto hazino, ma puedo ir. Spanish, estoy enfermo, pero puedo ir. English, I'm sick, but I can go. Ladino, puedo ir con ti. In modern Spanish, puedo ir contigo, o puedo ir con vos. I can go with you. Ladino. Cale salir a las cinco, y si tú no puedes ir hoy, puedes quedarte con mí. Modern Spanish, hay que salir a las cinco, si vos no puedes ir hoy, puedes quedarte conmigo. English, we have to leave at five, and if you can't go today, you can stay with me. The present perfect. The construction for the present perfect is with tener or haber plus the past participle. Tener means to have, and haber also means to have. In modern Spanish, today, you don't use haber to say to have possession over something. You would just say tener. However, haber is used in this past tense. So in Ladino, there's three ways of saying what in Spanish you only have one way of saying. For example, ella tiene hablado con nosotros. Ella ave hablado con nosotros. Ella ha hablado con nosotros. Whereas in Spanish, you would say, Ella ha hablado con nosotros. She has spoken with us. Possessive adjectives. In Ladino, the possessives are me for my, tu for your, su for his, hers, muestro, muestra for ours. It's o if it's masculine and a if it's feminine. Vuestro, vuestra for you, plural, and su for their. So in this example, I'm going to say, Me dieron haber de que tu hermano venía más tarde. Aide. I found out my brother was coming later. Let's go. In Spanish, the equivalent of these would be, Mi, tu, su, nuestro, nuestra, vuestro, vuestra, and su. And you would say, Me enteré de que tu hermano venía más tarde. Vámonos. For the Ladino vos, which is the formal you singular, you use everything that you would use for vosotros. For example, Vos llamo a las nueve para que vos puedas venir a buscar vuestra hija. Whereas in Spanish you would say, Le llamo a las nueve para que usted pueda venir a buscar su hija. I will call you at nine so that you can come pick up your daughter. For the plural vosotros or vosotras, you would use the same verb tenses, possessives, and objects. For example, Vos llamo a las nueve para que vosotros puedas venir a buscar vuestra hija. In Spanish, it's different because you would change everything. So you would say, Os llamo a las nueve para que vosotros podáis venir a buscar vuestra hija. 
Gracias for watching the video. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I hope to see you in the next video. Check out the other videos on my channel. I'll see you later. Ciao.